We have a solar storm warning today. It will be lasting all week because it's not just one CME that's coming, it's many, as reported by Sean Martin on Express UK and as detailed in our space weather report that comes out every day. We have speed of solar wind at 444 kilometers per second. And we have, we're awaiting a solar storm. NOAA forecasts that there is a 75% chance of geomagnetic storms May 16, when a CME is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. The first one come, came yesterday, and uh, it'll be going on today, tomorrow, though, the day after, basically all week. I don't know about you, but I have a tremendous headache. It started from the left and going all across the head to the right. And it said, and they do claim that we will be getting, if we are quite sensitive to this, we can feel migraine headaches. It has nothing to do with us. It's basically the change of the uh, frequencies that are bombarding us. But it'll go away. I just I assume that we'll have to have some patience. Um, now, a series of solar storms will be hitting Earth this week because of this huge hole opening up on the surface of the sun, as the scientists have explained to us. And they're warning, the coronal hole almost 20 times the size of our Earth opened on the surface of the sun. It's releasing particles into the universe, a massive hole stretching, staggering 220,000 kilometers across. That's about 18 times bigger than Earth's diameter of 12,700 kilometers. A coronal hole is a region of the sun's atmosphere which is colder and more dense than average, and it forms a corona, an aura of plasma which surrounds the sun, and is constantly shifting and reshaping itself. But when a coronal hole appears, more solar particles escape from the sun and are released as solar storms or coronal mass ejections, CMEs as we know them. It's unfortunate for us here on Earth because we're in the line of those coronal, that coronal hole and uh, as well as the CMEs. There could be solar storms hitting our planet until Friday. Now the thing is this, it's all right if they go tangently shaving us, but it will be a disaster if they hit us head on. We may have something that we had in 1859 when we had the Carrington event when those telegraph wires were overloaded with power and they melted down. Well, our technology is really more, much more advanced than it was at that time, so we uh, hope that we will not be hit head on by a, a, a solar flare, a CME. Now, the cosmic forecasting site Space Weather, as we said, NOAA, Forecasters boosted the odds of geomagnetic storms this week to 75% because of the series of CMEs approaching our Earth. And it says the action begins May 15 when the first CME is expected to arrive and it could continue through May 17 as additional CMEs will be following. Storm levels will almost certainly reach Category 1, which is minor, with isolated periods of G2, which is moderate storming as well. A G2 storm can threaten Earth's technology because it can cause a brownout for radio frequencies, making radio communications much more difficult. It can also cause power outages in high altitude areas. As solar particles hit the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere can expand and as they heat the outer layer of it, as the atmosphere expands, satellite signals make it much more difficult to reach the ground, potentially leading to a lack of GPS navigation, mobile phone signals, and satellite TV, such as, well, whatever you have, you know, cable. Now, additionally, a surge of particles may lead to high currents in the mega, me, 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 magnetosphere, which is magnetosphere, the Earth's uh, magnetic shield, which can lead to higher than normal electricity in our power lines, resulting in electrical transformers and power station blowouts, and of therefore a loss of power. 
The strong shower of solar particles could also cause northern lights, aurora borealis, and they are expecting northern lights to come quite south. They could, for example, in the United States, be reaching up to Wyoming, that is, near Yellowstone. That's how far south they'll be crossing the Canadian border. The northern lights, which include, uh, which is the aurora borealis, and the southern lights, aurora australis, are caused when the solar particles hit the atmosphere. And as the magnetosphere gets bombarded by these solar winds, we get the beautiful, uh, it's not just blue lights, they're basically rainbow lights. Um, I have been lucky enough to see them when I was living in Canada, in Montreal, and uh, it was winter towards spring. It was a Friday night, and they're absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful to see a, a curtain of color shimmering above you and at, without a sound, no sound whatsoever. And they appear as, that, as such a, as a layer of atmosphere deflects these particles. So the solar storm is here. As Express UK Sebastian Ketley explains in his article, the powerful stream of energy from the sun hitting the earth today and for the next week, obviously. Now, the geomagnetic storm caused by a stream of solar energy spewed, spewed from the sun, washing over the earth, as US space weather forecast warns us. It's a storm watch that's in effect starting Wednesday, May 15 to Friday, May 17, and onwards, perhaps, the US space weather forecast, NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, warned of these charged particles reaching Earth this week. The storm watch comes five days after the sun released the monstrous coronal mass ejection of this hot gas as uh, plasma. And uh, we know three separate CME events this month, the first two ready to strike today and tomorrow. Forecaster said G1 minor geomagnetic storm watch is now in effect for both 15 and 16 of May due to the anticipated CME effects. And a series of three observed coronal mass ejections took place since May 10th, 2019. The first two CME events are expected to arrive May 15, and the third anticipated to arrive the latter half of May 16. The second G2 moderate storm watch is now also in effect for today, Thursday, following the initial warning. And today's storm is a minor G1 event which can have a moderate effect on power grids and satellite operations. On the three-day forecast, the uh, space weather does not expect any minor or greater radio blackouts. Minor geomagnetic storms have power been, been known, however been, have been known to confuse migratory animals which rely on the Earth's magnetic field for navigation. So the poor creatures, I mean, hopefully they won't have that much of a problem. And as I told you, I already have a headache. I don't know if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy just because I'm anticipating all this or reading these things, but I believe it's, uh, I'm not that delicate. Uh, I think it is the, um, the CMEs because they do have effect on our, on our frequencies, our bodily frequencies. They have an effect on the earth as well, you know. Uh, we have posted, I have posted previously about a month ago, researchers and physicians, doctors, who uh, have confirmed and they have written articles confirming that the, the CMEs have an effect on the Earth's magnetism and frequency, the Schumann resonance, the Schumann resonance not only of Earth but our frequencies as well as uh, people, you know, as humans, as a living uh, uh, body, and uh, that affects our frequencies as well, and our brain frequencies are affected. That's why we get migraines. It's a very simple thing. Even the little birds, even the animals are affected. But in the same way, in the same articles that those doctors uh, experimented concerning these frequencies from the sun, and the Schumann frequencies, and the Earth, and the bodily and animal frequencies, they claim that we, with our, our meditation and prayers, can 
stabilize the sun. And I didn't even know that until I read those articles. We can tell the sun to please, please settle down. Please don't give your coronal mass ejections to us. Please forego us. And uh, that will have an effect on the sun. And it reminded me as I was reading those articles, okay, this is fact now. Okay, this is not uh, hyperbole or theory. This is fact. Besides the fact that they also um, confirmed that it has to do, the CMEs also give earthquakes, which we saw yesterday. We saw the Papua New Guinea 7.5 earthquake. That was the second day that the CME was out towards us. Uh, hopefully there won't be bigger quakes or, or more big quakes like that because of the CMEs coming in, God forbid. Um, okay, but what I wanted to finish concerning the thought that I started, because I, I think it's very important for me to put it here, because we're talking about this, is the fact that uh, I remembered in the Old Testament when Joshua took the leadership of, uh, for Israel uh, from Moses, when he inherited it from Moses, uh, and they were, the Israelis were, the Israelites were fighting against the Amalekites. He wanted, he needed more hours uh, to finish the battle, and he told the sun and the moon to stand still. So he was, in effect, giving his all, his essence, his prayer, his wish, his need, <laughs> okay, uh, to the sun and the moon. So he was in that way, and they listened to him. That was, that was a huge miracle. His, the power of this intensity of prayer that we have, that all creation listens to us because we are made in the image of, the, of, of God. And uh, they were all created for us. All of the universe and matter was created for us uh, as children and, and co-inheritors of the kingdom of God. And uh, we don't know that we have this ability to do that. And the, um, these researchers, these geologists, physicists, cosmologists, these doctors, physicians, confirmed this. And let me just read that part of the, the passage for you. It's in uh, the passage of Joshua 10, to chapter uh, 10, verse 12. No, Joshua... 10, 12, uh, the Lord was helping the Israelites defeat the Amorites that day. And in fact, there were uh, more of them that were done away with from the huge size of the hail than the, uh, than the uh, Israelite soldiers uh, doing away with them. More, more of the enemy fell by the hail than from the Israelite weapons. Anyway, the Lord was helping the Israelites defeat the Amorites that day, so about noon, Joshua prayed to the Lord loud enough for the Israelites to hear. Our Lord, make the sun stop in the sky over Gibeon, and the moon stand still over Aijalon Valley. So the sun and the moon stopped and stood still until Israel defeated its enemies. Uh, the, this poem can be found in the book of Jasher. The sun stood still and didn't go down for about a whole day, Never before and never since has the Lord done anything like that for someone who prayed. The Lord was re really fighting for Israel. And after the battle, Joshua and the Israelites went back to the camp at um, Gilgal. So that's what I wanted to read for you. And it's also proven, witnessed in the Old Testament that that took place once before. And uh, if we have enough faith, of course, God hear, hears all our prayers. So today's storm will have a minor GM1 event and can uh, will have moderate effect on power grids and satellite operations. The poor animals, as we said, could get confused, hopefully not too much. And the geomagnetic storm is the major disturbance of Earth's magnetosphere that occurs when there is very different exchange of energy from the solar wind into the space environment surrounding Earth. 
The storms result from variations in the solar wind, producing major changes in the currents, the plasmas, and Earth's magnetic shield, the uh, magnetosphere. The coronal mass ejections typically take a few days to reach Earth, anywhere between one day to three days. If they're really fast, they'll get here in one day. But some have been known to take as little as 18 hours. Hmm. Once CMEs reach Earth, they can create a number of disruptive effects on the ground, from power grill, grid failures and fluctuations to full-on tech blackouts. The most common side effect of geomagnetic storms is the creation of the northern and southern lights, as we said before. The northern lights created when solar winds excite particles of oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere to the point where they give off light. And today, Thursday, space weather expects aurora effects to extend down south to the northernmost U.S. states, as we said, Wyoming and all that line including Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wyoming, uh, perhaps even Idaho. Space Weather said, while the storms create beautiful auroras, they can also disrupt navigation systems, such as the Global Navigation Satellite Systems, GPS, and create harmful geomagnetic-induced currents in the power grids and even the pipelines. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.